horror movies. It's that time of year, and we have five hugely popular horror films that are based on true life horror stories for this video. So turn on the lights, check all the doors and windows, and grab your popcorn. We promise, no spoilers. Let's dig into this. The story of a girl possessed by a demon was absolutely terrifying when it was released in theaters in 1973. It reportedly caused a number of moviegoers to vomit, faint, and have heart attacks, which seemed to make the film even more popular. Everyone had to see what this was all about. It was the first horror movie ever nominated for a Best Picture Oscar, and it was based on a real story. In the late 1940s, the parents of a 13 or 14 year old boy from Cottage City, Maryland, called in clergy to try and help their son. They had consulted doctors and psychologists, but could find nothing wrong with the boy, who would be identified by the pseudonym Roland Doe or Robbie Mannheim in articles and books for the next 70 years. Strange things were happening around Roland. Objects would fly across the room, Heavy furniture would move on its own and levitate. His bed would shake whenever he was in it. Roland's mother was worried that his favorite aunt, who had recently died, had something to do with what was going on. She had taught him about spiritualism, and they would use a Ouija board to contact spirits. Soon after she died, the trouble started. A few of the experts called in to examine the boy were suspicious about what was happening but others were convinced young Roland was the victim of a satanic possession. In March of 1949, Roland was taken to the Alexian Brothers Hospital in St. Louis. During his treatment, which included exorcism rites, he had convulsions so violent he broke a priest's nose. He reportedly broke a spring from the bed he was tied to and slashed another priest. The bed shook and Roland would speak in strange voices. Words, symbols, and scratches would appear on his body. These phenomena were incorporated into the film The Exorcist. Roland's final exorcism was considered a success, and interviews with people familiar to the case over the years claimed he grew up to lead a normal life. But no one knew his real identity. And then, in 2021, it was reported that Roland had really been Roland Edwin Hunkler. He had lived in the fear of his identity being discovered for years. He reportedly told a friend who knew about his past that he had never really been possessed. He was just a bad boy. He died in 2020 at the age of 85 in Marionettesville, Maryland. He had been an engineer for NASA for more than 40 years before retiring in 2001. What's your favorite scary movie? For many, it's the cult classic Scream, the story of a group of high school students terrorized by the mysterious Halloween costume-wearing murderer called Ghostface was released in 1996. Screenwriter Kevin Williamson reportedly saw a TV show on a mass murderer that gave him the creeps and the idea for a movie script. Scream is very loosely based on the Gainesville Ripper, Danny Rowling, who murdered eight people, including five University of Florida students, in a 1990 killing spree that caused terror across the United States. Rowling was born in 1954 in Louisiana and grew up in horrifying circumstances that may have helped turn him into a mass murderer. We'll skip ahead here to 1977 when he went from a career in thefts and robberies to assaulting a woman who supposedly looked like the wife who had left him. Then he was in a car accident where a woman was killed. He was arrested multiple times for armed robbery and was in and out of jail in Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia, and Alabama over the next decade. This was not a good guy. 
and it was about to get worse. In 1990, Danny Rowling returned to Shreveport and shot his father twice. Not too far away, the bodies of Tom Grissom and 24-year-old daughter Julie and an 8-year-old nephew were found a short time later. By then, Danny Rowling was already in Florida. On August 24th, he broke into the home of Sonia Larson and Christina Powell, who were freshmen at the University of Florida at Gainesville. He duct taped their mouths and horribly assaulted them before stabbing them to death. A day later, he killed Christina Hoyt after horribly assaulting her, too. He then cut off her head and placed it on a bookshelf. Two days later, he killed a 23-year-old couple in their home. Rowling liked to place the bodies of his victims in rude positions for even more shock value. The last known victim of Rowling survived and told authorities her attacker wore a mask, but it was a black ski mask, not the screaming mask from the film. Two weeks after the murders, Danny Rowling was arrested in a high-speed chase in Ocala, Florida. He was arrested for robbery, but DNA left at the murder of the Grissom family in Shreveport was identified as his, and it closely matched DNA from the Gainesville murders. Rowling eventually confessed and was given five death sentences. His execution was carried out on October 25, 2006. Psycho, the Hitchcock masterpiece about Norman Bates' unusual relationship with his mother, and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, about a family of cannibals who eat tourists while the Leatherface character wears their skin, are both based on the story of Ed Gein. Psycho was released in September of 1960, while the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was released in 1974. Both are still hugely popular today, proving an Ed Gein-based story will never go old. Ed Gein was born in 1906 in rural Plainfield, Wisconsin. His brother Henry was five years older. His father's alcoholism would kill him at the age of 66 in 1940, leaving Ed and Henry to run the farm and look after their mother, Augusta. Henry seemed to think Ed's love for their mother was a bit unnatural and decided to move in with a divorcee in town. Ed didn't like that at all. After a day of burning brush in the fields, Henry was reportedly missing. A search party found his body and it was thought he had died of heart failure. There were weird bruises on his head, but no autopsy was performed. Augusta Gein had a bad stroke shortly after Henry died and Ed took very good care of his mother. After a second stroke, she died on December 29th of 1945. Ed stayed on the farm. He boarded up his mother's rooms and kept them just the way they had been, but all the other rooms in the house fell into a terrible state, and Ed Gein slowly went insane. He stuck mostly to himself, and people thought he was strange, if they thought about him at all. Then in 1957, Bernice Warden disappeared, and Ed Gein had been seen at the store where she worked. He was arrested and the sheriff went out to the farm. He found Bernice, decapitated and hanging upside down like a deer in the shed. And in the house, a horror story unfolded. They found a wastebasket, lampshades, and several chairs covered in human skin. There were bowls made out of human skulls and skulls on the bedposts. A corset and leggings from human skin were also found and masks from human faces. Ed Gein also collected female body parts and placed them around the house. It turns out Gein had a habit of visiting local cemeteries and digging up graves soon after burials. He particularly liked the bodies of women who looked like his mother. His plan was to make a woman's suit from human skin so he could become his mother. On November 21, 1957, Gein was arraigned on one count of first-degree murder. He pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Doctors diagnosed him as schizophrenic and incompetent for trial. He was sent to the Central State Hospital for the Criminally Insane and later to the State Hospital in Madison, Wisconsin. 
Over a decade later, he was judged competent to stand trial and found not guilty by reason of insanity by a judge again. He was sent back to the state hospital for the criminally insane. His farm burned down in 1958 before it could be sold. Arson was suspected, but of course no one saw anything, so no one was ever arrested. Gein died on July 26, 1984, at the age of 77, after spending over 25 years in institutions. His story has been used as inspiration for many books, TV shows, and movies, including The Silence of the Lambs and the American Horror Story Asylum, and even more nightmares. Creepy Dolls Why are there so many movies about creepy dolls? Annabelle is the 2014 spin-off slash prequel film in the Conjuring series. It's the story of a couple expecting their first child who buy a rare vintage porcelain doll for their nursery. The doll becomes possessed by the evil spirit of a woman named Annabelle. And it was based on a real creepy possessed doll story. The Annabelle doll from the movie is truly creepy looking. The real-life Annabelle that inspired the film? Well, not so much. The real Annabelle is an early 1970s Raggedy Ann doll. It had never been owned by anyone before being bought as a gift for a nursing student named Donna. The doll would reportedly move from room to room when Donna and her roommate, Angie, were gone, and be found sitting with its legs crossed or even standing when they returned. It also left messages written on scraps of paper in creepy childlike handwriting nearby. After weeks of this terrifying stuff, the doll was found with blood on it, and the girls had enough. A seance was held, and the spirit of a young girl named Annabelle claimed she was possessing the doll. After the Annabelle doll tried to choke Angie's fiancé and scratched him badly, Donna called a priest who called paranormal researchers Ed and Lorraine Warren. They advised Donna to have her apartment exercised and immediately took the Raggedy Ann doll into their possession. Since that time, Annabelle has been in the Ed and Lorraine Warren Occult Museum in Monroe, Connecticut, where she's locked in a glass case. A sign warning, do not open, and a devil tarot card are nearby. And according to the museum, Annabelle has been responsible for many accidents over the years, including one fatality. Annabelle does not like to be mocked, apparently. Well, there you have it. Five horror stories based on real-life horror events. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one. Wait, there's more. Trick or treat. How about just a treat? We've got another four horror movies based on real life events, and that comes out right now. We'll see you for part two.